Hello and welcome to Cosmic Rescue. I'm Cecily Saylor, the founder of Typewriter Tarot, the creator of this show, a tarot reader, a creative coach, a full-time weirdo. And in this episode of Cosmic Rescue, which is called Ready to Expand, But How? We are talking with Bobby Power, who is the founder of Log Cabin Apothecary. It's a witchy business that makes beautiful products like bath bombs, lip balms, skincare products, all the kind of wonderful things you want for caring for the body. Um, Bobby and her family have been developing this business over the years. Um, there's a lot of witchy through lines in her work and Bobby is also very familiar with tarot and learned how to use tarot at a pretty young age and it's something that she uses regularly in her own spiritual practice and even business practice. And she's at a place right now where she's ready to expand her business. But um, when we get to phases of expansion, we come across a lot of questions. How do I expand it? What's a manageable way to expand something? How can I expand it while also uh, making sure that I'm staying grounded in the present, that I'm doing so strategically, that I'm not racing forward with impulses versus moving methodically in a thoughtful direction. A lot can come up when we're ready to go bigger. So this tarot reading is designed to help you think about what expansion can look like for you and how you can care for yourself and care for the expansion and care for whatever it is you're wanting to expand in the process. So I really enjoyed talking with Bobby. I think you will enjoy our conversation. Um, I met Bobby at a market, probably a couple markets actually in Austin, which has really been um, one of the wonderful things that's come out of Typewriter Tarot is getting to meet a lot of other witches and weirdos out in the world at these markets. So enjoy, try the tarot spread yourself and um, let us know what you think in the comments. Hi, Bobby. Welcome to the show. It is so nice to have you on Cosmic Rescue today. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Good. I'm excited to talk with you. And um, you are the owner of Log Cabin Apothecary. You are an eclectic witch, an mm -hmm. alchemist, a plant worker, um, and then an entrepreneur who's been in business for almost four years now. And mm -hmm. just to start off, before we dive into your creative dilemma, um, start off by telling us a little bit about the work that you do and how you came to do this work. Okay, um, Log Cabin Apothecary is uh, my product line. It, uh, it started out as a hemp and CBD topical line that um, I began uh, because my clients, I was uh, a body worker um, specializing in chronic pain uh, for 11 years. And um, it led me to work uh, with the disabled and then eventually um, work with um death and dying. And so I wanted to make something for my clients that I couldn't physically go and, and be with them every week. It got to the point where I couldn't do that. I was traveling a lot, probably too much. And I said, okay, um, maybe I can make something <laughs> that will, um, well, that will work within the bounds of our, um, our restrictions, uh, especially in Texas, Texas is where I worked. Um, and I thought, you know, when the, with the farm bill, when it passed, um, in 2018 I said, Hey, we're here now. I, I had been, you know, dabbling in a lot of herbal work before. Um, but I said, all right, this is a, this is something that we can do. So uh, I made a bath bomb uh, and I didn't realize, I didn't realize um, what I was jumping into because bath bombs are extremely complex and um, they, <laughs> and they, um, they require really, really special conditions. And um, especially if they're handmade and hand pressed. And then um, uh, I decided to uh, have them be inspired by um our home, our home in East Texas. I'm in Austin now, um, but we still do work there. And when I say we, I mean uh, my mother and I, and um, and Miss Deborah, uh, who is a, a very very close family friend. Um, so yeah, that's what that's what I did, and um, the the product line really took off 
uh, I didn't, I didn't expect that I could do that uh, in the beginning um, because I was just going to continue coaching and helping, helping people in that way, um, creative workshops, that kind of a thing. But uh, it really took over, took over my life and it led me back to Austin. Uh, and um, yeah, it's just been a whirlwind. And, and so it's, I'm, I'm in year three and a half of Log Cabin Apothecary, and it has blossomed into lots and lots of different things. And so your product line is, yes, bath bombs, but like lip balms, skincare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. um, Natural, uh, natural things. So um, I, I felt um, when, when I was uh, providing uh, services, I, um, I couldn't find a product that I wanted to uh, refer my clients to uh, that I felt like I could trust. And then when I started digging in um, where a lot of people understand this, but there's so much filler, there's so, there's so there's chemicals, there's like uh, there's stuff that's just actually not necessary at all. The only reason it is necessary is to, is to scale a product um, and be able to sell it um, uh, on the mass market. Um, so, I thought, you know, this isn't necessary for my people. I can make this. I can make this. It's simple. We keep it simple. You know, that's it. That's all you got to do. And it was just like a light bulb. I could, um, I, I did the formulation, you know, at one point, at one point in my life, I really, I thought I couldn't do math. Um, I, I, in high school, I thought I could not do math. Um, and then uh, once I was actually inspired by something and um, passionate about it, Boop, all the all of the stuff just started to happen. Um, so I uh, I just rode this this wave uh, and I started with the bath bombs uh, and then, of course, a massage oil um, because I wanted it to be multipurpose. I wanted I wanted all of these products to be sustainable and uh, work for the most amount of people and um, and kind of. Uh, be, be available to even the most sensitive uh, demographic, right? Because uh, that's who I was working with. So I've got the massage oil now. And then um, I went into the uh, tinctures. Um, and I did not like what was out on the market. I did not like the flavoring. I didn't, uh, I didn't like it tasting like candy. Um, I didn't think it was even necessary to do that. And uh, so I made some flavors and then, and then there's that other part. Now I have ingestibles. And man, uh, from, from those core, the core, um, products, the, the core line, the original line, uh, with this, a, a salve as well, the ball, I call it the balm. Um, now the original, uh, it's in a rosemary mint, uh, which is, uh, really, really good for, uh, muscle pain. And, and, um, and then I, uh, realized that the, that same rosemary mint blend, um, and a bath bomb really helped women with migraines that, uh, they couldn't, you know, the hydrotherapy of that, um, could do more than, um, than what, than (laughs) what has been offered. Uh, and I was like, oh, wow, we we're onto something. We're onto something. So, uh, I studied more and more. I studied more and more about cannabis and its use. Um, and then still, you know, navigating the the regulations uh which is another um another aspect that is endlessly frustrating and also i am too stubborn to not (laughs) to not figure it out right so um yeah that's that's what happened so now i have some natural um uh natural skin care that isn't only focused on hemp and cbd right i wanted to uh start out with that you do what you know um but now i have um i have some natural skin care that doesn't use hemp or cbd but i'm focusing on um herbs that are local sustainable native native to texas native to east texas um and are also anti-inflammatory in nature. Um, so that's, that's how I kind of opened up to some different things and then um, packaged it like a very, very pretty, pretty little box uh, that uh, is approachable and, and lovely. And um, I always go back to the, the voice of the brand being, you know, this kind of charming Southern wisdom. That's, uh, that's really what uh, inspires literally everything 
that that I do. Great. Yeah. Um, and yeah, let's talk about East Texas. Some of my family is from that area as well. And um, but you are also descended from like a matrilineal line of yeah. healers. And as you mentioned, yeah. your mom is also part of the business mm -hmm. and um, yeah, your right. mother and grandmother before you have taught you a lot about the work that you're doing. So talk a little bit about yeah. that. Uh, part of your ancestry and and mm -hmm. what it's been like to have I'm very jealous um, my mother and grandmother are amazing and they have taught me many many things particularly about nature but um, yeah I would I'm envious of like having a whole line of female healers in your family yeah so um, I <laughs> I when I was in college uh, I became extremely um, interested in uh, genealogy I actually took a, a a class, a humanities class that um, required us to make a genogram. And it was another one of those moments where I was like, oh, I love this, you know? And it went back to the um, kind of the way that I was raised. Um, my, I have a, a interesting background and my family all has an interesting background. Um, my uh, grandfather um, was was a lawyer um, and he ended up leaving politics and um, and law to open a, a drug and alcohol rehabilitation center for adolescents in East Texas in Canton. Uh, and that was in the, uh, the mid late eighties. Okay. So it was actually the year I was born um, that the ranch it's called Sundown ranch uh, opened uh, opened. And um, it's been, uh, so I, I was raised there. It was one of the only, um, uh, facilities and still maybe, uh, one of the only facilities that could detox children. Um, so, uh, being raised in, in that environment, um, not, uh, not in the way that, um, the, the puritanical sense, it was more of, um, um, a sense of helping, you know, helping and understanding and, um, being very focused on mental health care. Um, my mother, um, is, uh, the art therapist there. Uh, so that was her, um, her position. And I eventually, uh, ended up helping, um, and then, uh, creating a program, um, with, within it, um, uh, focused on mindfulness. So, uh, that, that's a very, very core, uh, aspect of my background. Um, now it goes further back than that. Um, because my grandmother, this is all on my maternal, my maternal side, um, my grandmother's, uh, mother and father, uh, were, uh, they owned a pharmacy in, in East Texas in Lufkin actually. Um, and, uh, my grandfather, his name was Jeff. He passed, he passed, um, kind of early, you know, kind of early, but, uh, my grandmother, her name was Flossie. Um, that's who's a scarf I have right here that I wrap my cards in. Uh, she took over, she took over and this was, uh, in the early, early fifties, um, as a woman in East Texas, you know, compounding and, um, and running a business, but also, you know, um, helping people. Now her mother, uh, her name was Lula, Lula Maud. Um, she was an herbalist. Um, I have a, I have this amazing video of my, my grandmother, uh, Rebecca talking about her grandmother and how she was a very stern woman and uh, she would make salves and out of nettle uh, she would um, you know you have to you have to dig up the root of the bull nettle in in East Texas and then um, you fry it like with bacon drippings you know like potatoes you slice it up real thin and uh, and then you make a salve from it and I just I I don't know. It's not that they pushed herbalism and healing on me. It was just something that happened. And uh, it's interesting and I think relevant now that um, when she was talking about that was during the Spanish flu. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and she would make um, make her salves and ointments and put them in a basket. And because, uh, you know, people were dying uh, and she would go and the uh, and this is actually in Athens, an Athens area, East Texas, um, and deliver and people would come to the door and, and buy it. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, now we don't know much 
before, but before Lula, it's really tough when you get back looking at your ancestry, especially maternal lines, because, uh, you know, sometimes there's just not, not records, but I'm lucky enough to know that, that far back. Um, yeah, so so I get the lineage is, you know, Lula. Lula was an herbalist and the pastures and then the woods and stuff. And then um, and her daughter ended up running a pharmacy before she really could have, you know, and uh, in that time. And her daughter uh, uh, opened a hospital for children that are struggling. And uh, my mother worked there and um, we were we were blessed with a uh, my brother, Blake, uh, who had a, a rare form of muscular dystrophy, uh, who was uh, diagnosed at age five. Now he was 11 years younger than me. So he was more like a, like a baby, you know, and uh, we were able, and that is a terminal, uh, a terminal uh, illness. Uh, so there wasn't, Western medicine didn't really have anything for us, you know, which wasn't something that we could accept uh, and we, and we never did, uh, we never did. And, um, you know, his time here, he was, he was here until he was 18 years old. And, um, I mean, just impacted so many people's lives. Um, so really the death and dying work, um, is something that, uh, I just, I really fell into and, um, uh, also going to, you know, going to massage school, uh, and trying to figure out how to ease pain, uh, naturally, you know, and then, and then ending up moving into topicals and, um, and herbs, uh, and things like that. But, uh, you know, being, being creative, you know, just doing the things that you have, I think it's, it's, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's just what my, it's my whole life that I, (laughs) that I just poured into whatever I'm doing. And I'm really lucky to be able to do that. Yeah, thank you for sharing all of that. And it makes me want to ask as well, you know, because this is a show for creative people. And I think a lot of us think about creativity as like visual art, music, Mm -hmm. dance, Mm -hmm. writing. Right. Sometimes people forget writing, actually. (laughs) But like, um, there are so many outlets for our creativity Mm -hmm. and they're not just like the arts um, as Mm -hmm. we sort of categorically lump them together. And so I'd love for you to talk about like how you feel like your work um, or healing work in general is a vessel for your creativity. Mm. Like, what is it like for you when you're feeling a creative urge to make something and it isn't necessarily like an artistic expression, but it is a creation and it has an intention. Um, Yeah. What is, what are, how do you associate what you do with creativity and, and what is that like? Well, um, of course, I, I said that I was raised by an, art, uh, an expressive arts therapist, right? So uh, in, that, in that world, uh, everything is art. <laughs> Every, everything is. And the main thing um, I think that I was raised with the idea is that this is how you work through things. Like, this is how you, this is how you grow. Um, this is how you're having an issue write about it. Do, do some stream of consciousness writing. There's, there's your creative, you're putting it, you're, you're getting it out of your body. Um, what, whatever that may be. And I mean, I did go, I did go to art school. Um, uh, it was one of my, I thought that's what I wanted to do. Right. I wanted to be an art, uh, an artist, whatever that is. And, um, I went to, to art school in Florence, Italy, which was so, um, it was so not the right place for me. Oh, really? Uh, no, there's so many rules. There's um, so many rules. There's a, there's a, I remember getting into a, an argument with my professor who was a, uh, she was my mixed media uh, professor. And I had come from doing this like found art stuff and making sculptures out of, you know, fan blades and stuff like that. And um, uh, she, I remember her telling me, she was like, well, no, no, that's not art. It's mm. not art as a craft. And I was like, Meh, no, I disagree. I disagree respectfully disagree. And she was like, no, 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 I am the authority on this. And I say, because I have an education and because I live in this city and because this is what I do and this is what I know, and this is the way that it's always been. That's not art. And I was like, 
yeah, no, I, <laughs> I'm not, I'm never going to believe that. I'm never going to believe that it's um, yeah. So it's, it's a very core um a uh, core challenge, I think, um, for me to push myself to look at things in the way that it, it is this me being creative? How am I being creative? And and I mean, this is a this is the the feminine urge, right? Like mm-hmm. to to create and whatever that is. Um, so, I mean, really putting putting your energy into a thing or an idea or I mean, even, even a feeling and then expressing it, the, the act of expressing it is my, is my definition of art, I think. And that's, that is being, being creative. So I feel like I'm creative every day, Mm -hmm. you know, in some way. Yeah. And do you feel, um, I feel like once you're at that place, you can almost get the sense that like your life is a creative act like not everything you're doing every day every moment feels oh so creative and like vibrant but generally speaking you start to kind of like orient toward your life as like a creative process like who what is the person I'm creating or you know who are the children that I'm raising and how um, or like what are the plants I'm working with and what are they telling me and what wants to be created from them Um, but really finding like so many or endless outlets where your creativity can flow. I I mean, right. I mean, life, life is that like, I mean, getting, getting up every day is that, you know, and then if you, if you make it that, um, but I do think that there's a mindset, uh, there's a mindset that can push people forward. Um, especially, especially in hard times because creation is not easy at all. You know, life's not easy. Uh, uh, you know, there are struggles. And I, I think right now, especially uh, where where I'm at right now in my, my spiritual journey, my my uh, spiritual education, uh, my my physical body, like my physical place in uh, in the world and even in capitalism, you know, um, it's it's something that uh, you can choose to do. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy and it doesn't mean that it's going to be fun at all. I mean, that's the, I mean, writers, that's what writers write about, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, you know, the good one is the struggle of, of creation. Uh, it's not necessarily having a pretty picture. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, we're going to move soon to the reading that we're doing for you today. Um, first, let's see, what do I want to ask you first? Um, there's a few things to kind of touch on as we transition into that part of um, this episode. So you're, you also work with tarot. You know tarot very well. You were given your first deck by your mother, and um, which is one of those things that sort of like upholds that myth that you should always be gifted your first tarot deck, um, which we are here to dispel. But it is very nice when right. your own mother gives you a tarot deck. Treasure it forever yeah. and never lose it. Um, and you lost right. yours for a while and your mom found it yeah. again. Um, mm-hmm. Has your mom, do y'all share like a connection around tarot? What does it mean? Yeah. So, yeah. so my, my mom um, always existed a little bit on the fringe. Um, and uh, she, uh, especially in like rural East Texas, a uh, little bit difficult to incorporate tarot right um uh, mm-hmm. not mainstream yeah. and so she was doing these things at, uh, at at in a very conservative uh environment which is right. with children um who are uh who are struggling with uh with addiction right mm-hmm. and uh and also mental illness so she didn't use tarot um in in her work she used oracle cards Okay. And, uh, and so she, uh, would present it, uh, or trust your vibes, trust your vibes card. I, I always remember that. And I did not like them. Uh, they weren't my thing. I was like, okay, you know, uh, it wasn't, it just, what it didn't sing to me, the Oracle cards and all of that other stuff. Uh, but it super sang to her. She loved it. And it was the way that she could connect with people. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was super approachable really, really approachable. Um, so when I started studying further into uh, holistic medicine and meta- metaphysics, um, I realized the archetypes were very, very relevant 
and uh, the Jungian uh, philosophies uh, fold in and, and then going further into, uh, you know, the, uh, the tree of life uh, and studying it, it was like something clicked for me because I could see it. It felt tactile for me um, and, the, and the, the fool's journey. Mm -hmm. So that's what I decided to study for, for quite some time. I don't uh, use it professionally. I don't, I don't um, read uh, for people, but I do, I do for myself and I do for some friends, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And today we will be using tarot to explore um, this part of your creative journey. And um, you are looking to, and already beginning to expand your business even further and um, with expansion always comes a lot of like decision making um, expansion is something that happens naturally in certain in a certain sense, but also something that we nurture um, and that we try to bring a little bit of strategy to, even if that strategy is very intuitive. Um, you know, you have kind of like an idea for the expansion you want to see. And then there's all these steps um, to hopefully get you to that state of like next level of whatever you've created this foundation for. And I'd love for you to talk a little bit about like what expansion looks like in your business and also how expansion both excites you and frustrates you or puts you in contact with your own um, uh, foibles, I guess, sometimes. So um, what, what I realized, and maybe this is a, this is a, this is a thing that I have uh, incorporated into my life because I am um, a, I am neurodivergent one. Uh, I am super, uh, I get, I'm distractible, right? I know that I have ADHD. Uh, I get uh, uh, swayed, right? And I get really excited. It's really, I'm excitable. Um, so in business, um, what I realized is I could wake up every day with a new idea, right? Or be, you know, I, I mean, I'm probably absorbing other people's ideas. I'm, you know, I'm an empathic person. So um, finding the boundary with that um, has been um, a very, a very powerful journey for me. And the way the parameters um, in which I've been able to do it is to focus so much on where I came from and what, what my special, um, I mean, even intersectionality is um, and, and how I can translate that into something that I know I know, I know it fully. It's, ex it's exciting to me. It goes from not only, you know, our body um, and our, in our, our place in the world right now and this lifetime, right. It goes to our family and, and, and all of, all of the little genes that, that made us up. And then it goes to the land and the land informs uh, our bodies and how we deal. Uh, so for me, focusing on my spiritual home, which is, um, in, in East Texas and rural East Texas, I said, you know what, this is what I know. I don't know anything else. I, I don't need to, um, I don't need to take, um, take, or I, I feel very strongly right now about not taking from other cultures mm -hmm. that don't belong to me. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I am absolutely informed um, by them and I'm inspired by them. Um, but that's not something that, I'm made of, you know, so I, I am not the authority and I never will be. Um, but I, I could be on the, on the rosemary that grows in our pasture, you know, um, or the nettle, like the, the nettle and what that can do. So um, getting highly specific um, is the way that I've been able to keep, keep myself um, tethered and, and ground grounded really um, you know, with, with, uh, a feeling of, of support, um, from, from my lineage and land and, um, and people feel that mm. people feel that, um, when, when you feel so connected to something, um, and you translate it to them, they say, okay, yeah, I can feel that. Um, uh, I, I might not understand all of it, but I, but I hear you, you know, I know that you, you really have embodied, 
um, this ideal or this thing, or, or, you know, you know what you're talking about. So, um, that, that's how I do it. And, um, in expansion, um, which, you know, there's 1 million different businesses that we can do. Um, I know the small business owners wear 1 million hats. So, uh, you know, not only have I had to learn these things that, which are extremely exciting to me, but I also learned how to like, like code my website, you know, I have to figure out how to do that, which is not my strong suit, but, um, it's like, you can spend a little time, you download it. Um, and then, and then you move on and then you always can hold on to the thing that just really inspires you. So, um, we're, we're creating from, from the, the log cabin, the log, you know, log cabin apothecary, we have an 1845 log cabin, uh, and barn, um, that is museum quality. It's amazing. It's like, it's untouched. Mm. Um, it was, uh, lived in for five generations and, um, yeah, it, it has a very, very interesting story, but, um, my, my grandfather, um, bought it, uh, and he had it moved, uh, to our property and we've, we've been the stewards of it. Um, and, uh, we just, uh, decided my, my mother, my grandmother and I, um, in the past, year and a half or so, uh, two years, really, we've been working on it, um, that we're going to have people come and, uh, and allow people to have celebrations there and, um, uh, whatever, whatever that is. And also for it to be a place of peace, Mm -hmm. um, and to, uh, and to connect with people, um, looking, looking to do that, what, whatever that is, you know, uh, if it's a conversation on the porch, then it's a conversation on the porch, but, We've also got a lot of art supplies. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> so it's about um, this expansion for you is like, you know, you're running this product line, which you've been running for a while. And a lot of that is informed by your origins and your connection to the land that's still part of your family. And this next expansion is about turning that like physical space into something that is an invitation for people far and wide to come and yes, relax, be with nature, Mm -hmm. meet your uh, amazing line of healers in your family and potentially like encounter some of the products that you make should they need them for further relaxation and uh, self-enjoyment. So yeah, yeah, like really literally swinging the door open. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, yeah, I'm glad you brought up that aspect of yourself, identi- you know, being neurodivergent, um, mm-hmm. which really does, I mean, I think we all have our own, we all have our own processing systems, but mm-hmm. certainly neurodivergence um, is a different experience for people in like generating ideas and moving through logistics or bringing things into, um, into the world. And we have a world where it's like, everyone do it like this. Um, and neurodivergence mm-hmm. really demands that you give yourself space to process in a different way. Um, and so the reading that we're going to do is meant to help you, um, kind of stay focused through this expansion, which sounds like a big undertaking. And of course, when we are in a state of expansion, there's this possibility that, I mean, there's all this excitement for what's coming and what we want to create. There's this vision that we have in our mind and our imagination for what it is that we're like expanding into, Um, which also creates a little bit of pressure that we want to like live up to whatever the imagined um, version is. And then there's kind of the stamina aspect of expansion where you really have to stay committed to the thing that you're wanting to create and follow through on a lot of different things over a period of time. And as you've said, you've already, this is something you've been thinking about or kind of putting together for the last two years. And so there's still more time ahead of you in bringing this into reality. Um, Mm -hmm. And so the reading that we're going to do is meant to help you kind of stay focused on Mm -hmm. what's most important as you work on this expansion, while also being a person who has a lot of really fun and compelling ideas that you want to chase. So kind of making sure that your time and your energy is directed toward the projects that you really want to be focused on and not scattered too far and wide so that you're not really moving the big thing forward in the way that you want to. That's the long prelude. Um, But first, kind of to set up the reading, I wanted to really focus on the Three of Wands, and I was hoping you could hold that card up. This is the card of expansion in the tarot. There are other, I mean, 
you can look at all the cards in tarot and kind of talk about whether they're expansive cards or contractive cards. Um, and this one, but this one specifically really points to like, it is a time of expansion. And so, um, in that card, you see a figure facing away from the viewer. They are looking out over a cliff into this sea and down in the water, there are some boats. Um, the figure is standing between like framed by two wands with a third there in the middle of this like red cloak. Um, and a green cloak as well, which I kind of associate with um, life force, the red and green, kind of like a heartfelt passion, or you can get really literal with that and connect it with money. But um, the story here is that this figure is uh, like maybe created a shipping business. Like they move goods back and forth mm -hmm. between places that they need to go. And here they are looking out over their little shipping empire and thinking like, how do I make this bigger? What can I do next? Um, because the card before the three of wands actually looks quite similar, a figure framed between two wands who's focused on this, like who's holding the world and really starting to focus on what it is they wanna create. And so by the time you get to the three of wands, that thing has been created, it's happening. The, the person is watching it unfold in front of his eyes. And the question is like, where do I go from here and how do I level up? So for this reading, we just want you to keep that card out in front of you um, as kind of like a guide or an anchor. And I should ask you too, like, what is, you know, what do you want to say about the three of ones that I have not said yet? Um, you know, for me, the, the wands are the things that I, I feel like they're, when I see them, it's like, oh, work, <laughs> you, you know, uh, and I think probably I've given myself a, a bit of trauma over like how much, uh, how much work, uh, how much can I actually carry? Because I can carry a lot. Um, I'm strong. I'm physically strong <laughs> and I can carry a lot mentally and emotionally and spiritually. Right. Um, so the, I, when I see the ones, I'm like, oh, is it more, you know? more but i love i love what you're saying about um in the distance and actually like uh looking looking at it and looking at the these things unfold because it's that's super duper relevant for me right now uh because you know i set a bunch of stuff in motion and now it's like you know they're kind of working on their own and i'm like well what who's who's the baby you know who is the baby that i really need to uh to to be holding right now like which where is it um, and is it me <laughs> and not businesses? I don't know. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's what, um, yeah, I like that. I like to the, the red, um, uh, but, and then the green, because it, you know, it does matter the, the money, the money part. Yeah. This is how you support yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Well, let's jump into the reading and we're going to have you pull your own cards from the deck that your mother gave you when you were 15. And, um, the first question we're going to focus on is trying to bring forward a card that can serve as like your North star. So when you're looking out over that, you're the little empire that you've created and you're looking at all the possibility or you're having new ideas or people are coming to you with like offers and, uh, you know, partnerships that you can come back to this card and say, like, is this aligned with like my highest direction right now? And is this where I need to go? So pull a card for that. Ah, I love uh, it. Another three, <laughs> the three of cups. Yes. Well, it doesn't remind you of work quite as much, probably. <laughs> yeah, well, go ahead. I want to hear your immediate reactions. This is very beautiful. So, <laughs> yes. And um, uh, for me, um, you know, the, the emotion um, uh, is so important. It's so important uh, to me in, in the creative process and the things that matter, um, the things that matter, the things that we need to work through, the, you know, what we're being taught. Um, uh, and especially I think about my guides and the things that I have asked them you know, to remove the things that I've asked them to, um, to, uh, just make easier, please. Mm -hmm. Um, but <laughs> you know, one of my, one of my friends, I, I, 
I'm so lucky uh, to know and be connected to a lot of really strong women, a lot of really strong women. And we don't do this a lot, you know, like I think that we carry a lot, um, but the, the most, uh, the most I've gleaned from anything it is having to do with interactions between me and other women um, and deciding what is important and how are, what's the next step um, and, su- and supporting each other um, in that. And not only, you know, the, the feelings, but um, uh, you know, the, just the physical, the physical supporting of each other and being present together, uh, especially when every one of us is, a, a, you know, a, a small business owner and an entrepreneur, and we all want to do things, but it's impossible to do it alone. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have to carry it alone. And there are, there's groups out there um, for support. And I, I just, I have been so, so lucky to know so many wonderful wonderful women um that had helped me all the time along the way yeah what a perfect reply to this question um this being your north star and Mm. yeah it does really seem like the three of cups is as you pointed out like the wands are the fire elements like vitality life force the things that allow us to like do work and create And the cups, of course, are about the emotions and they're associated with water. And so seeing those three women lifting their cups Mm -hmm. and like twirling together and celebrating, Mm -hmm. um, there's also like a harvest gathered around them, actual Mm -hmm. plants bearing Mm -hmm. bearing fruit and vegetables. And um, I think that the notion there is that the three women have together created this bountiful harvest through their nurturing, through their connections with one another, through their good communication, Um, And through like this outpouring of love for what it is they create. And so it's really funny that like you work with your mom and Miss Deborah and you, and Mm -hmm. then there's also you and your mom and your grandmother um, Mm -hmm. who are very connected to the land that you're opening Mm -hmm. up to people. And so it seems like the answer here is like, you know, should new things um, enter your horizons or should you find yourself distracted? I think the question is like, is this, new opportunity or is this new idea um, in furtherance of community building or empowering women or creating spaces for women to empower one another? Or is it also aligned with like the vision and the mission that it seems you and your mom and your grandmother and Miss Deborah have also kind of Mm -hmm. aligned around? Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would blow that one up and like frame it. (laughs) Right. Well, this this too, I just want to say that um, uh, I'm also, I have been, and I am uh, involved in co-ops um, mm-hmm. and uh, that it has been the, like, we did this two nights ago and <laughs> because we had a holiday gathering and it's, yeah. um, uh, I mean, it, it has spurred me so much further. Um, and I love that. Like we literally danced, <laughs> You know, it held our cups. Uh, so mm-hmm. it feels so, so, so good. Um, yeah, I I think that that, that you know, the feeling, um, that gut, that activation um, for me happens when I am when I am clicking um, with uh, some other gals that are also, you know, they're on wherever they are on on the path. They're they're on it, you know, we're yeah. on some kind of the same vibe. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Our next card is one to um, show you like when it's time, just like say no, just don't even, don't even spend a whole lot more time thinking about it. Just no thanks. Okay. Uh, Just no. Just no. Just no. No is a complete sentence. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, Yes. Another thing I'm learning. Yes. Learning. Oh. Well, this is interesting because the Six of Wands to me is very much a like mission accomplished card and one mm-hmm. where you feel like the mission is fulfilled, not just for your own personal agenda, but also around a community. Like there's other people in this image holding up their wands and celebrating mm-hmm. this person who has returned 
from whatever journey successfully and completed what it is they set out to do. And you also see that green, uh, the red cloak and a green wreath on the head. Um, and so there's something victorious and achievement oriented around this. And so um, it's interesting to me to see it as a no. And I kind of, it, it makes me think that like, if you're for, if, if the idea or like the offering or the invitation comes and your first thought is like, oh, this could like elevate me or this could hmm. like you start to imagine some kind of like victory dance kind of thing that has hmm. more to do with you than the community hmm. and the because even even though this is a communal card, there is someone riding on horseback and then there's these people standing waiting for the person to return as if like, mm -hmm. it's very much like the hero's journey. And there's like one kind of savior who goes out to do something and comes back to the community having achieved it. Whereas three of cups is very like egalitarian. Everyone mm -hmm. is on the same level. The cups are, you know, everyone's standing together. Um, yeah. And so anything that feels like, like it maybe it just appeals to your ego off the mm. bat where it's like, Ooh, if I do this, I can have a little more visibility or mm -hmm. um, respectability or something like that, where mm -hmm. um, it feels like it blows you up without blowing up the whole, and I mean, blow up in the good way, uh, blowing mm -hmm. up like the whole community simultaneously. So mm -hmm. some, that's kind of what comes to mind for me. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I know that we're stronger together and I think um, what, what I've realized, um, especially as a person that sees potential in all things, right? Um, I've, I've, and also as a codependent person that just wants to help, you know, it's a lot, it's a lot easier for me to, um, to spend my energy and my time saying, oh, I know what you got to do. This is what you got to do. You got to do this, 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 and then look what's going to happen for you. You know, I love, I love to gas people up. Uh, it's my favorite thing. I love it. But I'm realizing right now that, and you know, I, from honestly, from uh, ha having health issues um, for a long time by giving, giving of myself um, to to others, um, uh, giving of myself, not you know, in. Um, uh, relationships, whether they're, um, platonic or not, uh, or, or business related, um, the giving of myself, because I am so able, uh, to do it. I'm like, Oh, well, you know, it's supposed to be hard. I can just do this. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I can just do it. I can see, I can see, um, down the line and I can see also how this is going to benefit me. That, that thing is something that I've heard in my head. I'm like, okay, I can justify it because it's going to benefit me because I'm trying to figure out how, this, this self-care thing works and, um, <laughs> and how to, um, how to still support, support people, but also make sure that I'm taken care of. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I really like, I really like how this it, it's, it's clear, um, that there is one person that is really real. You're everyone else is prop propping them up. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for me, that no is to see, you know, it, is it is it an even playing field or is it giving um, is it giving to someone else so they can achieve their goals and dreams um, rather so than maybe a community as a whole mm -hmm. um, or a group group as a whole? I can see that. Yeah. And I think there's even even though it is wonderful and generous, like I I also enjoy gassing people up or mm -hmm. sharing advice. I mean, I'm a tarot reader, right? And so like mm -hmm. that that also fuels my ego, even though mm -hmm. the motivation is to help this person grow stronger or do more or unlock the problem that they're facing. Mm -hmm. um, there's something gratifying personally for having like a little bit of like a savior element to it. And so it seems in this yeah. reading, the two things are like, focus on creating a community where people can show up and help each mm -hmm. other. And it's all this like beautiful exchange across mm -hmm. the network versus um, getting into situations where you're either like one-on-one -on -one helping people or like giving to this. Of course, it's great to give to communities, but your project right now is to create more of the community that you're already building so that more people can be 
you know, can locate themselves there and be, right. um, be uplifted by that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, I think that too, the ego, the ego thing too, yeah. um, with that. So I love what you said about how it's going to be, you know, it, it, it bolsters my ego too. You know, it's not just that this person, right. you know, it's, it's something that I'm doing, um, to, you know, that it probably isn't for the highest good. Maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. Okay. We are going to finish with the two final cards. And so this is sort of like a reading of contrast where first you have like, what is your yes? What is your no? And then we're going to choose two cards that will kind of depict what you're navigating and juggling and trying to balance as you like move through this process of getting to that place of expansion. So when you're ready, yeah, pull those two cards. Oh, interesting. <laughs> huh. Death and the I mean, four of wands. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, sure do have a lot of wands. Um, you and but, you have three of wands and now you have the four. But yes, please mm-hmm. carry on. Uh, well, death, death card has been a very, very prevalent um, concept um, in my life. Uh, it is something that... Um, I am now to the point where I, where I celebrate, um, and, uh, in, you know, in my, in my personal spiritual journey, um, and, uh, you know, considering like a creative shamanism and, and that sort of a thing and being and naturally be, just being a death doula. One thing that I got recently, I had a reading, um, an Akashic, uh, reading that, um, I was asking this question. I was like, what is, what is, what is death to me? You know, why, why is this, what is this grief and loss? Like, why is this so prevalent? Um, And um, why is it, why does it also make me happy to help people with this? You know? Um, And uh, the guidance that I got back was um, to continue to, um, to search and, um, and focus on ego death. Um, ego death, but also the art of dying daily, um, dying, dying daily to, you know, what, what your expectations are and what, um, what you're holding on to that's maybe informed by trauma, um, and even the expectation of what you deserve. Um, so that's, that's something that is a big, big, I mean, I've got my skull ring. You know, this is, this is something that's prevalent in my, in my day to day and something that I, that, um, uh, yeah, love the death card. That's great. Now this is a wedding card. So, uh, I mean, we're literally opening a wedding venue. That's, that's what we're doing, (laughs) but, but at the same time, oh, oh, how much fun. So, um, our, our venue, our retreat center, uh, I feel extremely strongly. Yes. Yes. We're we are holding gatherings. We're going to do small, intimate gatherings. We're going to do that, but we're going to celebrate people and have memorials and, um, and have sacred space in the woods. And, uh, uh and it's a place of reflection. Um, you know, uh, in my life, I've been able, uh, uh, to, to plan some funerals and, um, and it, it has been the, some of the greatest experiences of my life, of course it's hard. Right. Um, but that celebration, like these are, these are saying, you know, um, there's celebrations and new life, new life and ending of chapters, you know, whatever this is like, it feels very balanced. Um, yeah. I love that combination. Oh, mm-hmm. Tara, you've done it again. Um, Yeah. And especially, I love what you said about like ego death, which for Mm -hmm. anyone who hasn't like heard that term yet, it's where, I hope I can sort of say this well, but like, where you allow some part, like some part of uh, your constructed self Mm -hmm. to die and it's no longer in charge. It's no longer feeding you the stories that keep you safe. Like obviously as we go through life, as we're growing up, as we're living in certain families, as we're getting to understand like how this world works, we manufacture ourselves and like parts of ourselves are constructed to protect us, to defend us, to keep us safe, to like make it through situations without, um, with minimal harm, I guess. And, but as we get older, those, 
constructs, those parts of ourself that we have constructed are not uh, necessarily empowering us or we're in new situations where those protections aren't necessary. And so we have to like, allowing that to die um, is tremendously transformative. And um, the death card of course is about transformation and transmutation. And um, so I'm glad you brought that up for one thing. And then I also wanted to note that as you continue to expand, as, as anyone's life journey like keeps going, and if we continue to sort of aspire to see what all we have inside of us or what all we can do in connection with spirit, um, we're asked to change and to change a lot and change is scary as shit. And it means that we have to let something die, like some older version of ourself. And that doesn't mean that you like forget who you were or that you're unrecognizable, but these things that were really fixtures in your life have to be like buried and put in the ground so that you can keep growing. And I think that's a lot of pe reason why people don't keep growing or they don't really want to, or they don't really put a lot of effort into it is because the change that comes with it is really scary. And so that card seems to yes, acknowledge the work that you do around death and making it a positive experience, making it a meaningful, beautiful spiritual experience, which is another problem we have in this society. Um, and also, you know, creating more comfort around the fact that like, this is a life cycle and um, death is part of that. It's like mm -hmm. built into the whole thing. And so why not honor it in the same way that we honor birth? Um, and then I love seeing it with that four of wands card, because that really is like how we, how we give meaning to our lives in the face of our own mortality. It's like, mm -hmm. we celebrate baby, we, there are baby showers, there are graduations, there's family reunions, there's retirement parties, there is like engagement parties. And I don't, all of these, unfortunately are really like connected to a kind of like capitalist heteronormative linear journey right. in life, but we can celebrate whatever the fuck we want That's and right. celebrating movements and milestones in our lives is how we mark time. It's how we remember big moments in the journey and how we give meaning to what we're doing, given the fact that like we are all here temporarily. So right. these are just like beautiful, beautiful bookends to the work that you're doing. And it seems like you can wake up every day and sort of like, Someday, and you know, I was like thinking recently about what it means to like live closer to nature and live closer to the wilderness. And, you know, a lot of people want that because it's like, I want to see the animals and like all of the life that is part of nature. But when you do that, you also place yourself in proximity to death and you will see animals that are injured and dying every and, day, like, rotting yep. trees and like all of this is in motion. And so, Danger. yeah. Yeah. I um, mean, my mom, I, this is, that's really what I think about my mom who's living in this, in this situation. She has this little haven. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, speaking of <clears throat> allowing what no longer serves to go away, you know, and not, not holding on to this protection and, and working through grief and loss um, is something that uh, I really admire about her because, uh, you know, after losing a child, um, you know, maybe at times and, and some mothers would think, well, who, who am, who am I, you know, what is my identity? I know that I struggled with that, um, when I was leaving the position of caretaker, you know, um, mm -hmm. and, and that it, it yes, uh, you know, capitalism, heteronormative alt, but the, the idea of celebration and the idea of, um, uh, of being, of being together and, um, and honoring, honoring life as it comes, yeah. whatever, whatever that is. Um, how much fun. Yeah. What a oh, blessing for yeah. this endeavor. It sounds, um, yes, very ordained in a way, very divinely ordained and something that will also, I think really just deepen and enrich all of the things you've been experiencing and journeying through your your entire life. So yeah. um, I can't wait to see it when it's ready and come visit also. Um, and thank yeah. you, Bobby, for being on the show. We absolutely want to tell people where they can find you. Your website mm -hmm. is logcabinapothecary.com and yes. you are logcabinapothecary on Instagram. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, at Log Cabin Apothecary. And um, <clears throat> I mean, the, the venue that I keep talking about is called Wandering Woods Retreat. Um, mm-hmm. And it's at, at wanderingwoodsretreat.com. Uh, so we have, uh, I'm kind of centering a lot of things there. So come on. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, yeah. we are wishing you the very best of luck and um, really appreciate you again, sharing, sharing what you're um, what you're, what you're going through, where you're headed and, um, a lot of your story, which is really, really fascinating and beautiful. So thank you you for the work you're doing and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. We are always glad to have you here on Cosmic Rescue. If you would like to try this tarot spread yourself, here are the cards and the positions. Card one is a card that can serve as your North Star through this expansive process. Card two is a card to show you when to say no and how to protect your energy so you don't get spread too thin. And then cards three and four are two cards that depict what it is you're trying to balance as you move through expansion. So you wanna look at those in contrast, what are the things you're trying to balance here And how can you keep that in mind as you carry things forward? So go ahead and give the tarot spread a try. We'd love for you to use it and learn from it. Let us know if you have any questions. You can always email us at typewritertarot at gmail.com. Put your questions in the comments. We will, um, we'll be happy to help you. I'm happy to help you. Um, And we want to help you in other ways. So first, I want to tell you that I now offer one-on-one creative coaching, which is meant to help creative spirits come to their creative practice from a place of joy, excitement, passion, exuberance, and freedom, rather than coming to your creative work with feelings of doubt, self-loathing, uncertainty, all the kind of stuff that can make it really difficult to create. So I have a lot of practices and insights and tarot um, that can help creative spirits shift their orientation toward creativity and really examine some of the things that we've internalized and inherited around um, what it means to create, all the stuff that's not really helping us, but uh, nevertheless shows up in our minds. Um, We also have a membership program where you weekly receive rituals, practices, writing prompts, all kinds of things to really help you continue um, building an exciting creative life. And of course, we offer tarot readings, we do tarot for events, we host cool classes, um, we have weekly emails that share spreads and writing prompts just for everyone in the community. So get to know us, get closer, we'd love to be friends. And thank you for watching.